Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys what a macro is inside of DaVinci Resolve 17 and how you can use it. So in essence, what a macro is, is where you take multiple nodes inside of the Fusion page, which generally are going to give you one or multiple effects that you may want to reuse later. You save it as a file, and then with that macro, you select only the important settings that someone who wants to reuse that effect later may need to worry about. And then everything else that goes into generating the macro, all of the underlying nodes, are hidden away. So when you actually load the macro back, it'll come back as one node, and the details are hidden from view. On the only thing you need to worry about as someone using the macro is the settings that the creator decided to expose for editing. So in essence, you can take very complicated effects, hide the details from view, and then anyone using the macro to get the same effect in the future only needs to worry about a few settings rather than the entire web of nodes that went into originally creating it. So as long as you have nodes in the Fusion page, you can either do it with a Fusion composition if you want a completely blank clip to start from, or you can just start with the in out of a standard video clip. So in this tutorial, we'll just have a random video clip and the timeline go over to the Fusion page. And then in order to create our macro, we just need to figure out what nodes should go between media in and media out. And then anytime in the future we bring in the macro, we just put the macro here and then connect media into the macro and the macro to media out. And then that will be the only node we need to get the same effect in the future. So what we can do is select our media and node and and then add a couple of nodes to it. So let's add a blur and we can also add a color corrector. So this is going to be a pretty simple example. But let's say that for our effect, what we wanted it to do is to completely desaturate our image. So I'll take the saturation on the color corrector and I'll bring that to zero. So now we're looking at black and white. And then with the blur node, let's just leave it on fast Gaussian but we can increase the blur size and then maybe we get a, bit, a default value of 10. So what our macro is gonna do is both of these, it's gonna have a Gaussian blur by default and it's gonna completely desaturate our image. The setting that we can choose to expose might be the blur size, should be adjustable on a slider scale, just like it is here, and maybe also expose the type of blur. On the color corrector, we could expose let's just say the contrast and the brightness so those are settings we may want to play around with here so we'll make sure the contrast the brightness the blur size and the filter are exposed on the macro so we need to select all the nodes that should go into the macro uh, just think of the macro as an in out and we'll hide these underlying nodes so i'm going to right click with them selected go to macro and then do create macro and we can call this uh, the blur desaturation tutorial macro all right, so here we can see that the output box uh, right here is checked by default. If we're going to use the macro, we still need an input and an output at a minimum. Um, so we will leave that there. Let's scroll down and see what else we want to add in the uh, settings for the macro. So scrolling down a bunch, uh, we'll see quite a lot of settings here. So for instance, master RGB contrast. I think that's the one we need to check. You can see that there's other channels that we could have selected from. So rather than having RGB, you can see there's also a checkbox for master red contrast. That would be referring to if the channel was in red mode instead of RGB, but we're gonna leave it as RGB and we're not gonna give the macro user the ability to change that. So only checking RGB contrast here. So you do have to be a little careful about exactly which settings you do expose. So we also need the RGB brightness. So let's find that master RGB brightness. And then that's all we need from this color corrector node, I believe. So let's scroll down and we'll be able to see other nodes inside of our macro. So we have the blur. Uh, we can see the input is checked here. So once again, we need the input and the output for the macro in order to use it. So definitely leave that checked as well. And now we just need to find the controls for the blur node. So I said that we wanted the filter and the blur size. So here we have lock X and Y. I would say we want them to be able to choose whether they want X and Y locked together. And then we need the X blur size and the Y blur size. In addition to that, we need the filter. So I'm gonna check that. Currently it's set to fast Gaussian. And you can also see that they'll put the default values in here. So as it's set up right here, our blur size for X is set to 10 by default. Because X and Y are locked together, that 10 is also gonna apply to the Y blur size. Just in case though, I guess we could change the value there to be 10. 
I think that's a little bit more appropriate. And there should pretty much be everything we need to expose for the macro. So every other setting you see here for these two nodes, uh, when you use the macro, they're not going to be shown. Obviously, this upsides and downsides to that. The upside, it's less confusing for anyone who needs to use it because they only need to worry about the settings that you meant to change. But obviously, this is the downside of even if they want to change it, they can't. So if you prefer for everything to be exposed, you could actually select these and turn it into a setting file instead and load that instead. So the macro is going to hide everything, but a setting file we'll just bring back everything as you saved it. So let's go ahead and close and we'll save changes to the macro tool, including the macro name. So this is gonna get saved in the macros folder inside of our roaming app data. So I'm just gonna save it there. And now that it's saved, we should be able to use it inside of Resolve. So I'm gonna right click and do add tool. We go down to macros and blur desaturation tutorial macro. Okay, so we have our node here. I'm gonna delete the old nodes. And now, to get the same effect as having multiple nodes before, we just need to connect the media in here to the blur desaturation tutorial macro, and then that macro to the media out. And as I was explaining before, you can see that we have only the settings that I talked about before, uh, the contrast amount, the brightness, uh, the type of filter, whether it's locked on X, Y, and the blur size, in order to create our effect. So you can imagine that if we add three, four, five, or even more nodes to create the effect, and then when we come in here to the inspector for the macro, we only had a handful of settings that it would be pretty easy to use. So I mentioned setting files, so I might as well show you guys how to use that as well. Uh, let's hit Control Z a few times, so we get back to this state where we have a blur node and a corrector node. So if we take our nodes, we can right click and save them as a setting file. So I'm going to save as, and I will just call this the blur desaturation. Now you can save these anywhere on the computer, but by default, this is basically the path that it's going to be updated for your actual computer username, of course. So I'm going to copy this um, so that I can just bring the setting back in with a drag and drop. So let's save the file here. And now I'm going to delete these nodes. I'm going to go to the location on the computer where the setting files are stored. So if you want to load a setting back into a node composition, uh, this is one way you can do it. You can just drag and drop. So I'm going to drag this blur settings into our nodes. And now we see the two nodes pop in exactly how we had them before. So you can see with the blur, we have the blur size, fast Gaussian, the color corrector, so as the saturation set to zero. So the setting file saves it exactly how it was before, and then the macro hides all of the details. So now if we want to use these settings as they were before, we can just connect the nodes again, like so, and then we end up with the same result. So if after creating a macro, you decide that you want to change something about it, maybe expose a few more settings, you can still do that. So if you go up to the fusion menu, you can go to macro editor. And in here, we need to open up the macro file. So file open, locate the macro on your computer, double click it. And now you can get back to the same interface you had before where you can see all of the settings that belonged to the nodes and you can check which ones should be there, or shouldn't be there. Also changing the default values. And then after you make your changes and you hit close, you have the ability to save them to a new file, or you could just overwrite the original one. So in a nutshell, that's what you need to know about macros inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. If you're going to create some really complicated or cool effects and you want to be able to reuse it and make it easier to understand in the future, then macros are going to be the way to go for you. So I hope this helped you guys out in understanding that feature inside of the Fusion Editor. So I hope this helped you to understand that feature in the Fusion Editor of Resolve. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.